He's calling us to be kingdom people. He's calling us to live a life that's different, uh, to be set apart, that in everything that we do, we don't live lives like the people of this world. Uh, we are kingdom people. Just tell the person next to you, you're a kingdom person. Yes, and walk as such. Tell them to walk as such. Yeah, carry yourself as a kingdom person. Amen. Amen. And there are things that kingdom people do, and there are things that pe kingdom people don't do. And so we don't operate under the world, under the rulership of this world. We operate under the rulership of God. Now, Jesus came not to create religion. Uh, he actually came to restore a family. Uh, he came to restore kings who have lost their kingship. And a couple of weeks ago, I told you a story about what we call the prodigal son. Uh, and that's a story about family. When you look at it, it's a story about family. It is sto it's a story about the kingdom. It's a kingdom story. And it was the son who left home. Uh, the, the son left home. The father stayed home. Uh, the son said, I am going to go my way. But we saw that the son comes back home. The son requested to be a servant. And there are a lot of servant people in here who like to serve God and who like to do things for God. And God says, no, I didn't call you to be a servant, but I want to call you to be a son. Somebody who is family because you are family. You know, many times, even your, myself, yourself, we have been in those spaces where we have felt like we are not worthy to be children of God. We are not worthy to even come and stand in the midst of God. Anybody ever felt like that? You felt like your life is so broken, so shattered, that you are not worthy to stand in his courts. But God is not calling us to be out there. He calls us to be sons, to be family. So the son requested to be a servant. That's religion. He wanted to just play religion. And, and, and sadly, many people in the church, we, uh, we, 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 we are in the religion business. And that's very sad because God says, no, I have so much for you. I want you to be within the family. And so, uh, you know, we say, I want to save you, Lord. I want to save Lord. And I just want a little corner on a hill, God. I would rather be on the doorstep of the Lord. And God says, no, no, I want you to be in. You know, I want you to be in. So God doesn't want you in a little corner out there in, in heaven. I've shared many times here that when I go to heaven, I don't want to be in the lobby. I want to be right where the action is. I want to be where you are, God. Amen. In your presence, God. That's where I want to be. I don't want to be from afar. You know, sometimes even myself, I do that. When I go in another church, I go right to the back, you know, and sit at the back and hide. And I don't want them to know that I'm a pastor. I just go and, um, and just hide. And, and anybody like that, when you go in a building, you want to sit right at the back, right? But in the kingdom, we are called to be right where the action is, in his presence. And that's what he's calling us. He's calling the church and he's saying, I want you to realize that you are sons and daughters. And if you are sons and daughters, you don't worship from afar. You come right where the action is, right where you are. That's where I would want to be. So God doesn't want you in that little corner. He got the son in the house. The father in the story got the son in the house. And he killed the, the fetid calf. Now, in, in you know, every family in Israel, even today, they have flocks of sheep and goats. But they choose one, that special one uh, sheep or goat that they set apart. They feed it the best. Uh, they groom it, they look after it, they make sure that this one is reserved that, you know, for, for the special guest. That special guest when they come. And I remember when we, were, we grew up, um, you know, raising chickens. My dad was in the business of, you know, of raising chickens and selling them. And, but, you know, when it's Christmas time, uh, there was that one chicken that you would sort of muck and say, that one is the one. And you would put something on its leg to muck it. And you make sure it's got enough um, uh, food, you know, so that it actually grows bigger and bigger. And, and, and that's what they would do here. Uh, they will never eat that one until the special guest comes. Uh, and, and that's amazing. And I got stuck on that and I got thinking of, of, about that. And I said, you know, they kept this sheep, the, the sheep of God clean. They made sure it wasn't hurt. They made sure they protect that calf, that sheep until 
the special guest comes. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's the honored guest. And they would only kill it, they would kill this calf for the honored guest. Guess who God killed his calf for? You, right? Me, right? He, he, in the kingdom of God, you are the apple of God's eye. You are the apple of his eye. You are the center of the party. You cause the celebration to happen in the kingdom of God. Uh, it, it is amazing, you know. Oh, Sika Mandara Bosia. When you come home to God, heaven has a party. I, I want you to hear that the day, the moment that you say, it, Yes, Lord, I want to be a child of God, I want to be a son. There was celebration in heaven. There was a big party that took place in heaven. Oh, your family, your friends didn't celebrate. They thought you were crazy. They thought you had gone out of your mind. But Rowan, in heaven, when one gives his life to Jesus, there's a big party. You caused the party to happen in heaven. Heaven celebrated when you gave your life to Jesus. And if you haven't done it yet, the party is still waiting for the one who caused it to happen. There's a party still waiting in heaven for the one who is still out there, who still want to play religion, who's still happy to be on the outskirts. And heaven is saying, we're waiting. Is it going to be today? Is it going to be right now? Is it going to be tomorrow? And heaven is saying, come on, we want to have a party. When you come to know Jesus, they celebrate. You cause the party to happen. Amen, somebody. Oh, Jesus came to give us a kingdom. A kingdom. And he wants us to walk as such. That I want to talk a little bit about the program of God. So number one, uh, uh, first of all, it is to rule the visible from the invisible. Uh, the program of God to rule the invisible, uh, to rule the visible from the invisible through the invisible, the spirit, right? Living in the visible, the body, the people, uh, all of us on the visible, the earth. Uh, where we are. So that's what the Bible is all about. The whole Bible is about God's program. God's original intent was to rule the visible. That's the physical world from the invisible, from heaven, right? From uh, God never wanted to leave heaven. It was never his intention to leave heaven. That was not his intention. Uh, he created you and me so we could come and have dominion here. That's what he said. Let us create man in our own image or in our own likeness and let them have dominion over the world, right? Over everything that is. And so it was never his plan. He wanted to rule the visible from the invisible and he wanted to do it through the visible. You and me, that's the spirit man living in the visible. That's the body on the visible. That's the earth, right? And that's what he wanted to do. He said, let us have dominion over the fish, the birds, the trees, the plants. God says, I want to rule the visible, but stay in the invisible. That's what he wants to do. And I want to do it through the invisible. Living in the visible, all right? Through on the visible. You get the visible, right? <laughs> and, and, and then he says, in other words, he said, I want to rule the sin from the unseen, living on the unseen, uh, which is in the sin on the sin. You get the sin. All right? And, and that's what he wanted to do. And, 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 and so uh, that's his plan. The whole Bible is about God wanting to extend his rulership from the invisible world. Uh, that's what the whole Bible is about. He's already in charge of the invisible world. But he said, hey, I want, you, I want to rule another, another realm. He said, so he created the visible world, the one that we see. If somebody could just move that slide for me. Uh, he, so he wanted to, um, to move the visible world. That's the universe that we, uh, we live in. You know? So that's the world. That's what the universe is. It's the visible world. And... And the visible world, it's a reflection of the invisible world. The v world that we live in is an inf a reflection of... Sorry, you can't really see that, isn't it? Oh, it's not there. Uh, it's somewhere there, I don't know. So, so that, that's God's plan. That's what he wanted to do. So he created the visible world. That's what the universe is. It's the invisible world. It's a reflection of the invisible world. This is the, what the Bible says. That which is seen came from that which is unseen. So God has, has an awesome universe that's invisible. We call it heaven, or he calls it heaven. And he created a reflection. You all right, Lulu? Good, all good? 
Okay. Uh, so, and he created a, a reflection of it. It's called the universe, right? The universe where we live. In that, we have our solar system. We, you know, the galaxies that we have, we are part of one of those solar system. That is um, one of those galaxies that are there. The many galaxies, that's part of the Milky Way. And there are many Milky Ways in the, uh, in, in the universe. And, and, and we happen to be one of those, on one of those planets. That's number three from the sun uh, with billions of stars around it and 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 that's our own little solar system you know and god says i want to rule that but i am not going to rule it myself and so what he did is i'll stay in the unseen and i will create an unseen living uh, an unseen being and, and i'll put my unseen spirit in this un, you know in the unseen being and then i'll take the unseen being and i will I will put him, and I will have my unseen being, put him in a seen being, which is you and me. He said, I will take my spirit, which is not seen, and I will put it in the body of your body, which is seen. Living on the scene, right? On the earth, on the planet that he created. And that's what God said. He says, I'm going to put him on a scene body and place the body on the unseen, on the earth, right? So God wanted to communicate from our, the unseen, uh, to the unseen, living in um, you know, living in this, um, living in the sin, on the sin, on the earth, right? So the sin can be affected by the unseen that's living on the sin, on the sin. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. The spirit of God lives in us. Let me simplify. The spirit of God, which is unseen, lives in us, which is sin, right? Oh, yes, on the earth, which is the scene, the world, the scene, S-C-E-N-E, all right? And, and so he says, I am going to allow the unseen to affect and influence the scene that's living on the scene and have influence on the scene. So the scene is influenced by the unseen. Amen, somebody. Amen. And, and that's what he wanted to do. So, so um, uh, he wanted to have his kingdom come. And his will be done on earth. That's why he says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's his desire that whatever is happening in heaven will happen here on earth, right? So he wanted to do it through sons of men, through you and me. That's the original plan in Genesis, in the book of Genesis. God wanted you to dominate the earth for him through him connected to you through the spirit. When you and his spirit come together, you know, uh, he, he, you know, his spirit, which is, you know, living in you, right? And the two spirits communicate. He gives his directives to you and you give it to the body. Uh, so you give it to your spirit man, uh, which is living in the body and you give it to the body and the body affects the sin world that's around us. The problem is many of us don't have the, the unseen spirit living in us. And so we don't know what heaven is doing. We don't influence. Are people bothered by you being a Christian? I always say some of you should never, ever say that you are believers. Never. You should zip your mouth. Because your lifestyle and your life is not in connection, is not a kingdom lifestyle. The things that come out of your mouth, your behavior, your actions, and sometimes the things that go into us is not of the kingdom. And everybody is quiet now. Is that right? And so don't say people, you know, people come and say, oh, this is my pastor. And I'm just thinking, you know, Lord, have mercy because uh, uh, the, what we're about to discuss their behavior, what they've been doing. And I'm embarrassed. And so Jesus wanted, he said, I want to dominate the earth. But I'm looking for people who are kingdom people, who live like kingdom people, who live like kings. Who talk like kings, who act like kings, who behave like kings, who understand their identity. I am going to rule the earth through those people. They are not going to be like everybody else. They are going to be set apart. They are going to be pure. They are going to be humble. They are going to be a people who are after my own heart. And that, those are the people that he's looking for. 
And so he says, God says, you know, I want, you know, I want them, I want earth to experience, you know, the will of God being manifested in the lives of kingdom people. Is earth really, really sort of um, experiencing the kingdom through you, through me? Is earth really bothered by my being a Christian, by you being a Christian? You see, um, he says F is supposed to know what heaven is thinking about when it comes in contact, when F comes in contact with you. When you live in the, in, in, on the earth, on the sin, F is supposed to, um, to know what heaven is thinking about. F is supposed to experience the will of God by it being manifested in your standardization on earth. That's what he's talking about. Oh, Father, help me here, help me here. Jesus, one day he woke up, John chapter 5, and he was walking, right? He met a guy who was blind. And what did he do? He healed him, right? And then one time he met a guy who was lame. What did he do? He, he gave him strength. He walked up and he saw a leper. He cleansed the leper. He influenced his environment. Wherever Jesus went, he, he influenced the environment. He went into a situation. He saw a dead body. And what did he do? He raised him up. I mean, Jesus was working miracles. He was just influencing. He was just saturating the whole environment. He was the light of the world. Because wherever he went, when there was sickness, he was able to just push that sickness. Some of us, wherever we go, lots of bad things just start happening, isn't it? Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. So he was just on a roll, Jesus. Uh, uh, he, he was on a roll. And by afternoon, everybody, their heads were spinning. You know, they were like, wow, what's, so, what's, what's about this man? What is, it, what is he up to? And they started asking him, how do you do these things? How are you doing these things? By what authority do you do what you're doing? Wow. Listen to what he said. This is what he said. Listen to this. Don't miss it. He says, my father, John chapter 5, verse 17, he says, my father is always working. My father is always working. Do you see that? You see that? You, you, you missed it, right? You actually missed it. Do you see that? What did he say? My father is always working. Who is always working? Yeah. So he, he, you know, he, he says that he, he, he walks to a blind man. Uh, and, and he sees, walks on, uh, he, gives him, he gives him sight, right? Walks over to the guy who was lame and he gave him strength, leprous cleansed, all of that dead people are rising up and he's working miracles. And they said, how do you do that? How do you do that? My father is always working. And he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said this is what he said, this is what he said, this, 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 this is what he says. I mean, uh, he said, my father is always working and I only do what I see my father do. I only do those things that I see my father do. So he said, uh, uh, look, in the invisible world, God has healed that guy. Uh, uh, that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, listen, how did you heal this guy? And, and Jesus is saying, in the invisible world, in the realm of God, I have seen that he's already healed that man. He's healed in heaven. And because he's healed in heaven, it's healed here on earth. So I have manifest the healing that he already is healed in heaven. Oh, he said, look, that man who is lame, he's healed in heaven. But God needed an agency to manifest the healing. And God is looking for kingdom people who will manifest the healings that's taking place in heaven. Some of you, the, you know, the sickness that you have is because maybe somebody is, is not being an agent that's uh, you know, manifesting the healing that is already done in heaven. Think about that. So he said, it's already taken place. It's, it's, it's already happened. He says, I've seen uh, uh, God needed an agent to manifest the healing. So I touched him. I allowed myself to be an agent that's actually going to manifest the healing that has happened in heaven. Hmm. In heaven, there is nobody sick in heaven. Uh, and so according to heaven, this man is healed because there is nobody sick in this unseen world. Amen, somebody. Amen. So the only sick that exists is on earth. That's, that's the only sickness that exists, right? And God has no connection 
with you, the Pharisees, the scribes. He has no connection with you, and you are not connected to, with him. There is no you know, domination of the sickness on the earth. And so you are not dominating the sickness. Jesus is talking to these people. They're asking him, how are you doing this? How is this happening? I, oh, my father is always working. I only do what I see my father do. And this man is healed in heaven. And so I manifest what's happening in heaven. I'm, I'm walking in the kingdom of God. And so he then says, you, you Pharisees, you scribes, you, you're not connected to the Father. And that's why you, you can't manifest what you're not connected to. Amen, somebody. Amen. And, and so he says, you're not dominating the sickness. And, and um, let me say this. Most of what's happening in your neighborhood, in your family, is because you're not doing anything about it. As a kingdom person. Most of what's happening in Heather Green, or let's just go by in your home, in your life, is because you are not doing anything about it. Jesus is telling us that God has already done all kinds of things in heaven. He's already done all kinds of things. He, he, he just can't find children to manifest what's already happened in heaven. He's looking. And then he sees you and, and you're wrestling. Oh, I'm struggling with this. Oh, pastor, this is what's happening. Oh, I've got all these issues. And God's saying, I'm looking for my children. I have to apologize to some of you. Because you have come here. And we were supposed to see in the unseen. And so you can walk in your deliverance, but you come here and you go home the same. You, you come here, you stay, you are unchanged, you're unmoved because we are refusing to see in the unseen and be able to manifest whatever heaven is talking about, whatever the Father is doing, it has to be done here. And as a church, we have to come to that place where we say, as it is in heaven, that's what we want to see happen here. As you are worshipped in heaven, we will worship you, God. As we are healed in heaven, we want to see healing here. We are healed here. And, and that's what he's talking about here, Jesus. And Jesus is telling us God has already done all kinds of things. He's just confined children to manifest it in the sin. S-C-E-A-N-E. And, and so he says, oh, listen, no wonder why God say that. Uh, he says that by his stripes, you were healed. Uh, he didn't say you're going to be healed. You were healed by his stripes. You are healed already before you got sick. Before you get sick, you are already healed. You're already healed. In the heaven, in the heavenly, you are healthy, man. You are, there's, no, there's no problems there. You're already well. What we need is to get that thing translated. You, are, you, know, you all are not understanding this. You need to get that translated into your life. Where we actually say, Lord, we see it in the unseen, and we want to see it manifested here. And we begin to press in and begin to press in. Jesus says that the way I did all of this, is because it was done before I did it. I only do what I see my father do. That's what he's saying. And by the way, that word see is a strange Aramaic word he used there. It actually means to think. So I only do what I think. Listen, listen to it. This is, this is how he says, I only do what I see my father think. Is what, I, what, what he's talking about. My father does it, and he thinks it to me, and I do it. My father does it, he thinks it to me, and I do it. So there's a need for us. You can't do that if you haven't got a relationship with God. All of this is not going to happen. If you are playing religion, you are still outside. All Everything we're talking about is we are talking to us as kingdom people, that we are supposed to walk in power. We, we are supposed to walk as children of God. So what you see me do, Jesus says, was done before it was done. That's kingdom. The kingdom, the king is dominating heaven. 
There is no sickness in heaven because Jesus, King, the Lord himself is dominating heaven. And there is no disease in heaven. There is no poverty in heaven. Wow, Father. In other words, poverty is not normal for God. Tell the person next to you, poverty is not normal for God. In heaven, God is wealthy, so he's looking for people to show up on earth and manifest and get it translated here. Hallelujah. That's what he's looking. Jesus met some guy who was poor. I mean, people say, poor Jesus, you know. He met some guy who was poor, you know, you know, who were poor, a few guys who were p- poor. They had no fish. They toiled all night. And the Bible says that they toiled all night and stayed up all morning, scared to go home. They were afraid to go home. You know, they didn't want to go home because they were, they were scared of their wives, I assume. They had no money. Have you ever wondered why Peter and James didn't go home that morning? Doesn't that bother you? You read the Bible and the Bible says uh, he met them. They're sitting in the morning. They were up all night, right? Fish, trying to fish. And then the Bible gives us insight. It says they just stayed there all night. My brother, you finished your delivery, right? You're running up and down and maybe nothing happened. You're scared to go home. And so you pack yourself, you sit in your car and you think, I'm just going to clean the back of the van. I'm not going home. Something is wrong, right? Uh, that, that's just my mind going ar- ar- in a, ar- ar- around, you know. Um, uh, Jesus comes along. You know, uh, uh, people say Jesus is, you know, poor little Jesus. No, no, Jesus. He walks to these guys. Uh, he need nothing. They're broke, empty boats, no fish, caught nothing all, all night. Uh, let me tell you, if Jesus wanted to start a fishing company, have you ever thought about that? He would have put everyone out of business if he started a fishing company, right? He, he, would, have, he would have just put everyone out of business. And, and what's happening here, have you ever thought about that? That these guys are sitting in their boats, right? And they're, 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 they're finished and, and they're tired. And they were professionals. These, these people were professional fisher, you know, fishermen. But they caught nothing. And in three minutes, three minutes, I love to walk with Jesus, you know. Can you, just, can you imagine just going like into, into Lewisham Hospital? Can you imagine going with Jesus into Heather Green Baptist Church and just see people stuck in their ways, stuck in different things, and he was just say, hey, hey, you're well. You're set free. You're healed. And, and so three minutes, the boat was sinking with fish. It was full up. And that was only one trip. Poor Jesus. Are you sure? Is he poor? Do you know what that meant? You know, that meant in heaven there was a boatload of fish with lots of fish. He only does what he sees his father do. He saw it, and so he manifested. He saw the boat full of fish in heaven, and he says, hey, let's get back. Let's go and start fishing again. Oh, no, but we fished all night. No, 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 no. I've seen it in heaven. And God is looking for people who will manifest what heaven is thinking, who will manifest what they see in heaven, and who come and say, yes, the doctors are saying this. Yes, the situation is saying this. But heaven has already have a different report altogether. And because if the he- heaven is saying this, I am going to manifest it here. Amen, somebody. Oh, I only do what I see my father do. My father just filled a boat up with fish, so I did what I saw my father do. I wonder how many banks in heaven are filled up and you are scrapping and struggling. Stay with me. Some of you are going to go prosperity. That's not prosperity. I'm just saying. I wonder how many houses are in heaven, you know, filled up houses with your name. And you're here, oh, 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 oh. And heaven is saying, I'm looking for my kids to manifest what has been declared in heaven already. I'm looking for my kids, my children, who will connect with the unseen, who will see what the unseen is thinking, doing, and they will do it here on earth, no matter what people say or what people think. Amen. Amen. I see my father do it, and I do it. Come on, somebody, talk to me. Uh, we speak things that are not, come on, talk to me. We speak things that are not as though they are, right? 
you know, uh, you know, for they already are. That's what the Bible says. Prophecy is uh, seeing things that are not as though they are. And as children, as kingdom of God, we are called to see things that are not as though they are. Because in heaven, they already are. Amen, somebody. I want you to uh, lift your hand wherever you are. Just lift your hand. Just say, I am healed. I am healed. Now. now. Yes, you are healed. Oh, let, just pray wherever you are. Father, we worship you. We worship you, Father, because you are worthy. Lord, we declare it. We see it in heaven. There's somebody here who is not well. Lord, we see it in heaven. May they be healed even right now in the name of Jesus. May they walk in freedom, Father. Amen, 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 amen. Thank him right now, wherever you are. Thank him, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We praise your name, Lord. Father, we pull the things that are unseen, O oh God, into the seen, O oh God. That's kingdom living. That's what you're calling us to, Father. We worship you, God. God wanted his kingdom of heaven to show up on earth. That's what he wanted. His kingdom on heaven to show up on earth through his sons, through his children. What is it right now that you have accepted as this is my portion? This is my woman. This is what I, I've been dealt with in, with life. God is saying, I want you to to see into the unseen and be able to pull it down, pull it down and say, God, in the name of Jesus, I see it. Your word says that I have come, that I, you know, we should have life and have it to the full. That's what heaven says. And so, God, I'm pulling down life right now in the name of Jesus. I'm not happy. Lord, I'm not satisfied with just making about and getting on and, and up, down today, tomorrow down, up today, tomorrow down, God. Your word says, I've come that you may have abandoned life. And so I am pulling down abandoned life. Amen. In Jesus' name. His, his word says that, let the poor man say what? That's what the Bible says. That's what heaven says. And so we pull down what heaven says and we say, because your word says, I am going to, 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 to manifest it on earth. His word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That's what heaven says. And you need to pull it down and, and walk with a, with, a with a stride and walk up with your head up and say, this is what heaven thinks and I'm going to walk the way heaven sees me in the name of Jesus. By his wounds we are healed. You are healed in the name of Jesus. You know, this is what dominion means. When you have dominion, you start bringing things, speaking into situations. And, and, and we, we all need to be set free. Because we, we've been doing religion. And he's saying, I want you to walk in dominion. We, we read these words. Whatever his word says, we manifest it. Whatever heaven is thinking. The world tells us, oh, look, you've got problems. No, my God is able to do abundantly. We manifest it on earth. Number one, number one, number one, dominion. What does dominion mean? It means to govern, to govern. Number two, it means to rule dominion, to rule. Number three, it means to control things. God is calling you to control things, whatever situation, whatever circumstance that you may be going through, it means to control things. When you walk into your office, I'm in charge because I am a child of God. I'm of the kingdom of God, right? When you go to work, Margaret, you may have people above you, but you are actually the one in charge because God is with you. When you walk in dominion, you start to understand. You know, you actually ask people. I said this two weeks ago, and I said, you walk into your office and you say, good morning, everyone. The sun has just arrived. Any problems? The father is still on the throne. Anyone with any issues? What are the issues in the office today? And you manifest them on the earth. Amen. Amen. And number four, we said, what was number four? Oh, to manage. Number four, it means to manage. And number five, I want you to underline number five. 
Underline it in your notes and write it somewhere. Number five is very important. The word dominion means to master something. To master something. To master it. And, and, and not be a jack of all trades. And we have a lot of people who are jacks of all trades. They are good for nothing, right? That's what it means, right? But actually you master something. You know, uh, you see people changing relationship from relationship to relationship, job to job. Today they are this job, tomorrow, you, you know, they are another job. And, and they are forever changing and never, you know, from one friendship to the next, to the next, to the next. And, and they're just uh, jack of all trades. Dominion means to master. You master something. It means you dominate an area. Are you dominating the area that God has planted you? You know, wealthy people, prosperous people, and successful people are very masterful people. They've mastered something. Take, for example, the McDonald's, right? McDonald's, they concentrate on one thing and they do it well. What is it? The burger, right? How about the chicken guy? KFC. Right? Is that right? He mastered the chicken. He's the master of, of, of chicken. And everyone is talking about it, and the recipe is kept secret. You know, it, it, you know the, the recipe is all secret. That's why you have to find your gifts. We have to find our gifts. Not our education, but find your gifts. Your education will keep you in that place where actually you're frustrated and all that. Find the gift that God has given you. That's the secret recipe that he has given you. Your gift, your gift makes room for you. Your gift, you know, it, it makes room for you in the world. We have to master that one thing that God has given us. And do it right. Dominate, dominate. Hallelujah. Jesus said the secrets of the kingdom are not given to the world. They are reserved. He keeps his secret for you. He has a secret for you, the one thing that you can do. You know, they're just for you. You know, the way you are supposed to live in life, the world is supposed to wonder, how do you do life, Sister Joyce? How do you carry yourself? Look at you. You know, when you go through stuff and you still bounce back and you still have the joy of the Lord upon your life, how are you doing life? The world is supposed to wonder. They're supposed to wonder, how are you doing? Why? Because you have a secret that God has given you. Amen, somebody. Jesus gave you a secret recipe. You can, you, you call things that are not as though they are. So even though the circumstance is saying life is bad, you start to call what God says. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives you. You know, he says, uh, uh, he says you can do all things. We talked about that. And when you do that, they come into being from the unseen. And God, that's what he wants to do. He's looking for children who will manifest what he, heaven has already declared. That's kingdom living. When you walk and you speak into situation, you don't just accept what the world gives us. You begin to find your niche. You find that one thing that God wants you to do. You know, there are some shops, you know. They sell everything. What, what are you good at? You know, everything. I can do everything, Pastor. I'm, I'm uh, problems. There's one thing that God has called you to do. Stay in your lane. Do that one thing. And this, this, is, this is who I am, and this is what God has given. This is the recipe that he's given me. And you do that one thing that he's asked you to do. Here's the next one. To have dominion means you have lordship. You have lordship, rulership. I want to look at that um, whole idea of, um, of king. Look at that word king. Uh, first of all, king means uh, ruler. I remember. Anybody remember the wooden ruler yes. that we used to have at school? With? Remember that? Yes. I, I used to get in trouble with that ruler <laughs> many times. Hey, my teachers, they were cruel. I need to talk to them. I, I used to get in trouble with that ruler, definitely. Now, they call it ruler because um, uh, the word ruler means standard. It means standard. Now, a ruler does what? It draws a straight line. Is that right? Yeah. It draws the straight line. What, what does a line do as soon as you, you draw it? Two things it does, right? What does it do? It separates, right? Yeah, so it separates, right? Uh, as in, you know, and then secondary, uh, so when you draw the line, it, maybe you have a blank paper, you draw the line, 
you know, they, you know, as soon as you draw a line, there's separation, there's boundaries that's been put in place, right? And secondly, when you draw a line, you set a standard. This is where you're supposed to stay. You know, I remember when I was growing up trying to learn to write, and I'm still learning to write. And instead of writing on the line, you know, there's some people, you know, you see it floating in the air. The, the standard is there, but they're, they're writing across the lines. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of us, we do that in our lives, right? God says, this is the standard. And we say, oh, I'm going to write it this way. And, and it's everywhere. And God says, I have already set the standard. So, so you know, uh, a ruler draws the line. It draws the line. God draws the line. He decides what is right from what is wrong. What is left from what is right. He decides what's good and what's bad. You don't decide. God decides. God is the ruler. God is the one that draws the line. Last week I was talking about democracy and, and republic. Remember that? One of the things, don't tell anyone, right? We're not online, are we? Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I struggle with, with the Baptist setup, is this whole issue of democracy. Where we all come together in the church meeting. I am a member, you know, and I have to have my say head. I have to make sure my point is head. I have to do this. That's not of God. That is not of the kingdom. When we come together as good Baptists, when we come together, I did say good Baptist online. Did you hear that? <laughs> when we come together, we are supposed to say it's not about us. What does God wants to happen here? Whenever I say, my will, I want this, they didn't do this, I want this, I want that, I'm going to make sure they're here. That's not of God. The kingdom says, as we come together, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do here? Holy Spirit, what must we do here? So church, let's be very careful when we come together. Let's be careful that it's not about democracy or what we want. There's theocracy, what God wants. That's what we want. Amen, somebody. Amen. Good Baptist, amen. amen. And all, all the Baptists online watching, amen to you too. Amen, amen, amen. God draws the line. He's the ruler. No one else draws the line. He draws the line. That's why God gave Moses a ruler. We call them commandments, right? He gave Moses what? A ruler. When people were sinning and messing up, God says, I'm going to give you a ruler, Moses. Uh, and he gave him the ten marks on a ruler, uh, the, the ten commandments. That's what a ruler is, the standard. Moses, if uh, they want to live right, if they want to walk in blessing, Moses, if they want to know my protection, if they want to know my hand in their lives, if they want to know my presence in their life, if they want to know my leadership in their life, if they want to see blessing in their life, Moses Tell them they have to follow the standard that I've set. They have to follow the ruler that I've put in place. And that's what he's saying here. That's what a ruler is. So king means to set the standards. And by the way, my spirit is just full today. You know, do you know what the word salt means? What the word, word salt, 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 salt. Some of you like too much salt. That's not salt and pepper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Jesus comes in the world and he says that, uh, what did he say? His message was, was fresh message, right? He gave the beatitude, which means the attitudes to be. So he gave us, this is what you're supposed to be as the kingdom people. And I'll teach on that some other time. And then at the end of, the, of it, he says that you are the salt of the earth. Every one of you. But do you know what salt means? Do you know what it means? It doesn't mean seasoning. Sold means the elite standard. That, that's what it means. It, the elite standard, it doesn't mean seasoning. Everyone thinks of seasoning, but it doesn't mean that. Are you following me? People say, oh, you know, we season things. We are, we are, Jesus was saying, oh, we go into situation and we season things. No, no, no. That's not what, what he's talking about when he was talking about this here. Uh, you know, you know, you know what, what he was saying is, uh, you know, you, you were saying, in fact, that word, you know, it, it means elite standards. And what he was saying was, the word sold means the elite ones. Uh, the elite ones. That, that's, the, that's what the Aramaic um, of the word, you know, the meaning of the word that Jesus used there. He said, you are the what? 
You are the elite ones, the elite standard of the world. That's who you are. You set the standards. You, you what? Set the standards. I'm, I'm really trying to help you understand that the, the power we have, or we are supposed to have as dominion people. In your office, that person bothering you, you set the standard. You set the standard. Yesterday, I was talking to one wise young man, and he said something. What did you say yesterday? <laughs> yeah? If you don't do anything, you accept the... If, can you say that? Give him a mic so we can hear his beautiful voice. He's single, by the way, if you are looking... Right, Matt, what did we say? The standard you walk past is the standard you accept. The standard you walk past is the standard you accept. Some of us have accepted standards. We just say, oh, and so things just continue. If it's abuse, yeah. it's okay, better. He's going to, oh. let me continue. So he said, you are the elite standard of the world, you set the standards. He said, when it comes to fashion, I was talking about this on, on Wednesday, and they made it, I don't know whether they understood me or not. When it comes to fashion, we don't take cues from the world. They look to us, and they say, wow, look at those people. And I was saying, when it comes to cooking, we don't look to Ramsey. We don't look to Oliver, this guy called Oliver. We don't look to, there's another one, is it from, uh, uh, yeah, I better be careful here. I was about to get there, right, right? But there's this other guy, right? He's got lots of locks, I better not go there. But yeah, we don't look to nobody, not even your mom. We get revelation about cooking people because we are kingdom people. So we have revelation downloaded to us. Let the Spirit inform us. The Bible says that the the steps of the righteous are ordered by Ramsey? No, by the Lord, right? And so when it comes to cooking, I don't need no Oliver to tell me how to cook. I don't need nobody to tell me how to cook. Bless you, but I will take revelation from God. Uh, That's what God is looking for. Let the saints set the standards in every area of their lives. Amen. Amen. You're supposed to get revelation from God. When, when it comes to working on the job, the best worker is supposed to be the kingdom person. But like I said before, some of the kingdom people, man, if we go, you know, they take pens without, you know, they steal time. They're late to get to work. And they'll be the first one to go home. Let me tell you the difference between a hired servant and the son. A son doesn't look at the clock. A son says, this is my house. This is my family. A hired servant, I remember I used to be hired as well. We used to go pick up cotton. I did that for some time, you know, go, what a job. And we just pick up cotton, you know. And cotton is very heavy, is it? No. You can spend... Three hours picking up in here, one kg. (laughs) And you are charged two, 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 maybe that time it was 50p per per kg. And and you spell in the scorching heat and all. That's not the sermon. Let's come back. (laughs) And we used to just look at the clock all the time. If you are a son, you realize I may be employed here but I am a son. I'm not working for nobody. I'm working for God. I am working for the kingdom of God. I'm answerable to God. Be the best worker that God has called you to be. If you are the delivery guy and you're delivering things, you're working for God. And you do the best you can. Let them experience the best delivery ever. You come to the door. They see your smile. And they say, wow, this delivery guy is the best guy ever. Why? Because he's a kingdom person. You're in HR wherever you work, right? 
Let them know. Let everyone testify that you are a child of God. There's something about you. Maybe you're a driver, Robert. You're driving around and, and it can be cumbersome. But you become the best driver ever. You become the best delivery guy ever. And you are showing... Sorry? What was that? <laughs> Come on, pray about it, Robert, right now. We pray for Robert in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. So when we walk around, we don't walk in shame. We don't walk defeated. Because some of us are actually walking in shame, even in our offices, because we are not dominating. Some of us, we are at the mercy of the world. Some of us are living a life that's not our life. Some of us are satisfied with the scraps. Some of us, the stresses that we have, we are causing it. Because we are not walking in dominion. Tell the person next to you, is he talking about you? Be careful though, they might come after you. <laughs> if you go to work late, that's not the standard. If you come to church late, I'm talking to you as well. That's not the standard of the kingdom. Let today be the last day. If you decide to say, I'm late, so I'm going to stay at home. Uh, let me just stay because pastor said, that's not the standard either. <laughs> you know, Daniel was the salt of Babylon. He was the salt of Babylon. The king loved him because he had an excellent spirit about him. He, you know, the Bible says that he worked above the call of duty. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that he was the greatest among the stirrups. You know, uh, Daniel chapter 6 verse 1 to 2 talks about that. That means that the permanent secretaries of the, whole, you know, of the whole city, the guy had an excellent spirit at work and the king promoted him and made everybody jealous. Why? Because he knew he wasn't working for, for the king. Who are you working let me tell you something. If you are going to be in the kingdom of God, you have to be the elite in your job. You have to be the elite one. You have to be set apart and you have to, you have to carry yourself as a kingdom person. And you have to set the standard of that place. You have to inf influence that place. You have to be an example in that place. If you are going to be a doctor, you have to be the best doctor there was. If you are going to be a grandma, you have to be the best grandma there was. Not money grandma. That's not the standard. The grandmas that prays, the grandma that stands, the grandma that listens, the grandma that walks alongside, the grandma that supports, the grandma that, 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 that talks and seeks to hear what's being said. Some grandmas, they're, they're just miserable grandmas, you know. One of my prayers, one of my, one of my prayers is that um, when I get to that place, I can't say it, when I get to that place, and maybe I'm a little bit, you know, and maybe I'm a bit slow and all that, and God has blessed me with grandchildren, even in my old age, I say, Lord, help me to be the best I can be. There are some grandmas here. Maybe, uh, uh, you know, Pastor Margaret, today we're going to pray for some grandmas that just need to be delivered. Yeah. They, they have the bitterness of the world. And so and they're always just angry and always just, ah, and that's not of God. Today, say, God, I want to be the grandma there was. I want to be the grandma of the kingdom. I want to be set. I want to be the elite ones. Let your grandchildren ask you, hey grandma, what's happening? And you say, hey, I got born again. 
I'm a child of God now, you know. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. Daniel had an excellent spirit. If you're a mechanic, let nobody talk about putting the engine wrong or, you know, that you're not able to put things back. If Whatever you do, master what you do. Are you hearing me? Yes. You're a kingdom person. Yes. You know, whether you are by yourself, Rowan, and you have, you've been asked to stuck and they keep asking you to do this mundane job. I'm not working for anybody. I'm working for God. You put your head down and you serve as faithfully to the best of your ability. Everything you do, whether you are paid more or less, you do to the best of your ability. Whether they are horrible to you, you still do the best that you can with your own abilities. Amen, somebody. That's the kingdom of God, and that's what he's calling us. Amen. You are a kingdom person. You are in another government altogether. And, and you are in a system of citizenship which set the standards of these people. And so he wants you to set the standards wherever you are. That's the kingdom of God. And I hope you live here today with just a little glimpse of, of introduction in the kingdom life. You live here because that's what God expects. God expects you to do everything with excellency. If you stand here to sing, you know, let's not just be comfortable with just the mandate. Nash, where are you? We were talking about this with Nash. I said, whatever God has given you, if you are supposed to play the drums, master them. Master what God has given to you. And I'm asking you, please tell your children, go tell everybody, whatever you are asked to do, master it. Do it to the best of your ability. Worship God with whatever it is that God has actually put in your hands. Amen, somebody. Be like Daniel. Be different. Amen. We praise God. God, praise God. Praise God. And, and you, know, uh, you know, I was thinking about this, about mastering things and carrying ourselves, even as kingdom people, that even when you go to the court, don't, you know, there's some people in a corp. I don't know if you've seen. Please don't be like that. I, I don't want to. If you see me and you're like that, uh, just change direction and, and don't introduce. Don't greet me. You see some people, in, you know, in a, in in the corp. They have their robe, you know, their morning gown on. Have you seen them? Yeah, yeah. You see them, and they've got those round things that they put in. They, you know, where are you going? You are a kingdom person. When you wake up, you're going to the co-op, you know, just a round shop, right? You put your nice dress, right? Your nice robe and you carry yourself into the shops and, and you are walking in there with style because you are a kingdom person. Amen. And wherever you go, whether it's in your office, you don't just drag yourself, but actually you carry yourself as a ping kingdom person. Amen, somebody? Amen. Oh, walk in because the Father gave you the money, and he wants you to spend it for his glory. All right, we're going to ask God to give us grace this morning. Uh, we want to ask God to give us ready, uh, grace this morning. Number one, to be kingdom people. That may we be kingdom people. May we see life through the kingdom. May we not approach life just from ignorance. Are you ready for, for the kingdom? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready to know Jesus the way he's supposed to be known? Not the religion way, but the way he's supposed to, know, to be known. He wants us to know him with intimacy. Because the Bible, the word of God promises that if we seek him with all our hearts, we will find him. And it goes on to say, if you hunger and thirsty for righteousness, you shall be filled. Are you ready to be filled? Amen, amen. That's what God wants to do in our life. Let's bow our heads in prayer together. Uh, just tell, just, just, just right now, just say, I believe God. I believe the kingdom. Father, I am the citizenship. I am in the citizenship. Father, I pray for everyone here, God. I thank you for your work in their hearts. In the name of Jesus. I praise you now that you are faithful to bring to pass everything that you promised them, Father. Lord, manifest your word in the life of every listener here. To those who are watching online, God, those who are listening, and those who are here in this worship center, Lord, Lord, let the impact of your word bring change in their lives, O oh God. Evidence and manifestation of your peace, O oh God, and your grace and your power in their life, Father. May it be manifest, we pray, for the kingdom is in power, God. Not just in words. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you will continue to teach us, Father, your ways. Continue to teach us, O oh God, 
so we can live according to your standards, God. May we live according to your standards, Father. Help us, Father, to walk the way you want us to walk, God. We thank you now for bringing us together, God. As we go out of this place, oh God, may we continue to dig into your word, God. Because, Lord, your word says that man shall not live by bread alone, God, but by every word that proceeds from, from your mouth, oh God. I pray that you give us the spirit of hunger in our lives, oh God. Stir up a spirit of hunger, oh God, that we will hunger and thirst after your righteousness, God. And now, Lord, if, if there is sickness among us, oh God, Father, I pray healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, if there are any of those that are in, still in the pig pen, oh God, don't know you, oh God. They're still far away from you. They wander their own way, God. I'm praying, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them come home, Father. Today, may it be the day that they choose to come back home to the Father. Lord, we want the party to happen. Let's party in heaven, Father. That's what we want to see, God. Lord, you have the calf ready for them, Father. Ready to have a party in heaven, oh God. Don't let them stay outside, God. But let them come to the Father's house, Father. Bring them in, God. Every young person here, every older person here, Lord, who doesn't know you as Lord and King, I am praying, oh God, may they surrender themselves today. Let them come back to the house, Father. Because you love them, Father. You are not mad at the sinner, Father. You love them, God. You love each and every one of them. You love the sinner and you gave your life and your blood for them, Father. Let them return home, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. And I expect this, Lord. And I'm expecting, oh God. I'm expecting, Father, we pull those things that are not as though they are. Even right now, oh God, those things in our lives, oh God, where the enemy has thought that he got us, Father. But today we are standing, oh God, and we are speaking to whatever circumstance, oh God. Oh, we pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus.